Hello and welcome to the Following Truth Podcast, a podcast dedicated to sharing the truth about what the Bible really says. I'm your host, LJ, and the title of this episode is Did Enoch and Elijah Really Not Die? Most people believe that both Enoch and Elijah did not physically die, but were taken to heaven by God. I must admit to actually believing this myself before doing this study. It is claimed that these two men, unlike every other man, including Jesus it must be stated, did not die a natural human death, but were taken by God alive into heaven. The verses that are most often cited as proof for this belief are Genesis 5.24 And Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. Hebrews 11.5 By faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death, and was not found, because God had translated him. For before his translation he had this testimony, that he pleased God. These two verses used to prove that Enoch did not die. As for Elijah, just one verse is often cited, 2 Kings 2.11. And it came to pass, as they still went on, and talked, that behold, there appeared a chariot of fire, and horses of fire, and parted them both asunder, and Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. So it appears, at face value anyway, It is only when we simply take these verses alone and view them with the preconceived belief, as I did, that both these men did not die, that they do indeed show that both Enoch and Elijah did not die. However, when we actually analyse the verses and put them back into the Bible and not simply on their own, which is not how biblical verses should be interpreted, along with proper context and understanding, the meaning of these verses completely changes. The first thing that we need to establish are some basic Bible teachings that automatically show an error in this understanding regarding these two men. The Bible very clearly states that no man has ascended to heaven apart from Jesus. Jesus himself said this, John 3.13, And no man hath ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man which is in heaven. The Bible also says that all men die. 1 Corinthians 15.22 For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive, and that it is appointed for all men to die once. Hebrews 9.27 And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment, there is no exclusion here, all men die once. This, as stated, even include the Messiah, Jesus. Jesus was not even the exception to this rule. Clearly, the Bible, and specifically the very words of Jesus, would show the understanding that these two men did not die as being false. If the understanding that we hold goes against the very clear statement of Jesus, then it is our understanding that is incorrect, and not Jesus. So, how do we rectify these apparent differences? Many people have tackled this problem. There are countless postulations that can be found on most Christian websites. One of the leading Christian websites with literally millions of followers is gotquestions.org. The answer they give us is just 210 words long, and ultimately boils down to, we don't know. And I quote, Why did God take Enoch and Elijah? The Bible does not specifically give us the answer. Some speculate that they were taken in preparation for a role in the end times, possibly as the two witnesses in Revelation 11, 3 through 12. This is possible, but not explicitly taught in the Bible. It may be that God desired to save Enoch and Elijah from experiencing death due to their great faithfulness in serving and obeying him. Whatever the case, God has his purpose. And while we don't always understand God's plans and purposes, we know that his ways are perfect. Psalm 1830. So, this multi-million dollar Christian website, with apparently some of the foremost apologists working for it, has managed just 210 words, and at the end, basically said, we have no idea how to reconcile it. We don't understand some of God's ways. Really? Is that really the best that we can do? I rather think we should be looking for a more concise and definitive answer than this. So, here goes. The answer is pretty simple and straightforward. Both Enoch and Elijah died. Regardless of the usual teaching by most church denominations, Regarding these two men, they both died normal human deaths. Let's start with Enoch and show that both Moses and the author of Hebrews 
said that Enoch died. So we've already seen that there are two verses regarding Enoch, Genesis 5.24 and Hebrews 11.5. So we need to break these verses down and analyze them in a bit more detail. Notice that Genesis 5.24 says, God took Enoch and also that he was not. This is the first important piece of information that we shall analyze. He was not. It does not mean that he did not die. He was simply not on the earth for God took him to heaven without having died. In fact, it means the exact opposite. Enoch did in fact die. Genesis 5.24 is talking about Enoch's actual death, which happened when he was 365 years old, which we are told in the previous verse, Genesis 5.23 and all the days of Enoch were 365 years. All the days is a reference to the days that a person is alive. Genesis chapter 5 is a list of the descendants of Adam to Noah and Noah's sons. So basically a list from Adam to the time of the flood. In this chapter the term all the days of is used nine times. This includes Adam, Seth, Enos, Canaan, Mahalalel, Jared, Enoch, Methuselah and Lamech. All of these people died, and the days of them tells us the years that they were alive, before they died, and Enoch is included here in this list. To be taken by God is an idiom for a person who is dead, and it is still an idiom used by people today to refer to somebody that has indeed died. Then there is the phrase, and he was not. He was not is actually a very common biblical idiom for someone who is dead. We see this is used by the brothers of Joseph, the sons of Jacob. Israel, during a conversation they had with Joseph, not knowing that they were indeed talking to their brother Joseph. They stated that one of their brothers was not, Genesis 47, 13, and they said, Thy servants are twelve brethren, the sons of one man in the land of Canaan, and behold, the youngest is this day with our father, and one is not. They were referring to Joseph, who they themselves had sold into slavery and had presumed was dead, or at least that's what they had made their father believe, and Jacob did believe that his son was dead. Genesis 37, 31. And they took Joseph's coat, and killed a kid of the goats, and dipped the coat in the blood, and they sent the coat of many colours, and they brought it to their father, and said, This have we found. Know now whether it be thy son's coat or no. And he knew it, and said, It is my son's coat. An evil beast hath devoured him. Joseph is without doubt rent in pieces, and Jacob rent his clothes, and put sackcloth upon his loins, and mourned for his son many days. Earlier the brothers had referred to Joseph as exactly this, dead. Genesis 44.20 And we said unto my Lord, We have a father, an old man, and a child of his old age, a little one, and his brother is dead, and he alone is left of his mother, and his father loveth him. The little one referred to is Benjamin, who was Joseph's only full brother. Their mother was Rachel. So they referred to Benjamin's brother, Joseph, as being dead, or one is not. So we see they equated the term one is not with being dead. This is again seen in Lamentations, where the Israelites were praying for the restoration of Israel. They said that their fathers, who had sinned, are not. Their fathers were dead. Lamentations 5.7 our fathers have sinned, and are not, and we have borne their inequities. Clearly again, they used the term, and are not, as a way of saying they were dead. Now when we go to the New Testament, we see that the same phrase is used there. In Matthew 2, we are told that Herod killed all the children under two in Bethlehem, and the coast thereof. Matthew 2.16 Then Herod, when he saw that he was mocked of the wise men, was exceeding wrath and sent forth, and slew all the children that were in Bethlehem, and in all the coasts thereof, from two years old and under, according to the time which he had diligently inquired of the wise men. We are then told that this killing of the children by Herod fulfilled a prophecy as spoken by the prophet Jeremiah. Matthew 2.17 Then was fulfilled that which was spoken by Jeremy the prophet, saying, In Ramah there was a voice heard, lamentation and weeping, and great mourning, Rachel weeping for her children, and would not be comforted, because they are not. Rachel weeping for her children, who are not. The children who were not is a reference to the children that had been killed by Herod. 
so the children who were not had been killed. They were dead. This prophecy was spoken by Jeremy and is found in chapter 31 of the book of Jeremiah. Jeremiah 31.15 Thus saith the Lord, A voice was heard in Ramah, lamentation and bitter weeping. Rachel weeping for her children, refused to be comforted for her children, because they were not. So the phrase, he, she or they, are not or were not, is simply another way of saying they were dead. But we still have a problem with Hebrews 11.5 as it would seem to indicate that Enoch did not see death, that he was translated so that he should not see death. Again, we need to look at the language used. When we look at the verse again and analyse it in more detail, the verse simply does not say that Enoch did not die. It says that he should not see death. Hebrews 11.5 By faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death. Now we must remember that the writer of Hebrews is referring back to the verse in the Old Testament in Genesis, which we already saw did not mean that Enoch did not die. We must interpret the verse in Hebrews consistently with the writings of Moses, as to not create a contradiction that doesn't actually exist. And Moses did not say that Enoch did not die. So, how do we correctly understand the verse in Hebrews? It's important to notice that the author of Hebrews does not record Enoch as not seeing his own death. Enoch was translated so that he should not see death. The death that Enoch did not see was that of the death upon the earth. Enoch was taken by God to spare him from the death on the earth. During Enoch's time, the earth was corrupt and evil. The flood would come around 700 years after Enoch was taken. Enoch was righteous. He had faith in God. Hebrews 11:6. But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. But as we see in verse 5, Enoch did please God, so Enoch must have had faith. We see that Enoch walked with God. This is actually stated twice of Enoch, once in Genesis 5 verse 24, but also in verse 22. Genesis 5 22. And Enoch walked with God. After he begat Methuselah 300 years, and begat sons and daughters. Repetition of such indicates the information presented is of importance. Walking with God is a biblical term to simply be following God. We are told that Noah walked with God, and Noah was perfect and just. Genesis 6 9. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man, and perfect in his generations, and Noah walked with God. Enoch, being righteous, was taken away from the evil of the world. Isaiah 57 1. The righteous perisheth, and no man layeth it to heart, and merciful men are taken away, none considering that the righteous is taken away from the evil to come. So we are told that the righteous die, they are taken away from the evil that was to come. However, no man layeth it to heart, meaning that people do not understand it. There are times when a righteous person is taken by God, meaning that they die, not because they are wicked, but actually because they are not, and so that they are spared the evils of the world. Enoch, being righteous, was taken by God, meaning that he died away from the evils of the world. As we also know, by the time of the flood, only Noah and his family were considered righteous enough to be spared. The verse in Hebrews also says that Enoch was not found. Again, this does not mean that Enoch simply disappeared, being taken by God into heaven without having died. He was not found is again another way of stating that the person died. This is perfectly highlighted in Psalm 37, 36. Yet he passed away, and lo, he was not. Yea, I sought him, but he could not be found. So we see that we have the reference to, but he could not be found. Why could he not be found? Because he had passed away. He had died. And again, we have the reference to he was not. Enoch could not be found because he had died. When we put Hebrews 11.5 back into context of the chapter again, we get a completely different picture. It even specifically states that Enoch did die, just eight verses after the verse that is used to show that Enoch did not. Hebrews 11.13 These all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off and were persuaded of them, and embraced them, and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. 
In context, the author of Hebrews lists a number of people from the Old Testament, Abel, Enoch, Noah, and Abraham, Hebrews 11.4. By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and by it he was being dead, yet speaketh. By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death, and was not found, because God had translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. By faith, Noah, being warned of God, of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world, and became heir of the righteousness which is by faith. By faith, Abraham when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, obeyed, and he went out, not knowing whither he went. Notice the term by faith. By faith Abel, by faith Enoch, by faith Noah, by faith Abraham. All of these are stated as by faith, and all of them are stated as having died in faith. Hebrews 11.13 Enoch is not excluded, but included in the all that died in faith. We also have the use of the word translated here. Now what exactly does this word mean? The Greek is matatithemi. It means to transfer or to change from one place to another. It does not mean to go to heaven or to be changed into a spirit to inhabit heaven. Had Enoch been changed and gone into heaven, then Jesus would have been incorrect in his statement regarding being the only man to have ascended into heaven. The same word is used in Acts, where it is translated by the KJV as carried over, Acts 7.15. So Jacob went down into Egypt and died, and were carried over into Sochem, and laid in the sepulchre that Abraham brought for a sum of money of his sons of Emor the father of Suchem, the bodies of Jacob, and the Israelite fathers, who had died in Egypt, were carried over to Suchem. They were transferred, taken from one place to another. They had died. They certainly were not changed physically here. Their remains simply moved from Egypt to Suchem. Moses said that God took Enoch. Enoch died and God translated him. He moved him, in the same way that after Moses died, God buried him. None of the Israelites buried Moses. He was buried by God, and nobody knows the exact location of where Moses was buried by God. Deuteronomy 34, 5. So Moses, the servant of the Lord, died there in the land of Moab, according to the word of the Lord. And he buried him in the valley of the land of Moab, over against beth -Bor. And no man knoweth his sepulchre unto this day. Just in case someone wishes to use the, well, that's what the KGV translates it as, but my Bible says, argument. The NIV translates it as brought back, the ESV as carried back, and the ERV as carried over. All state the same thing here. The bodies were taken, translated from Egypt to Suchem. The verse also does not say that Enoch was taken to heaven when he was translated. It says that he was not found which we have seen is a biblical way of saying that he died. So Enoch died. He was taken by God so that he would not see the death, the evil that was upon the earth, to be spared the evil that was to come. As we know, the world descended into such wickedness that God brought about the flood to rid the earth of that wickedness. There is also another usage of the word translated. This is found in Colossians chapter 1, Colossians 1.13. Who hath delivered us from the power of darkness? and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son. Here, we, believers, are translated into the kingdom of God's Son. We are taken away from the power of darkness, and translated from the darkness to the light. When we put the two verses together with the correct understanding, they simply do not mean what people so commonly believe that they do. But what about Elijah? Let's have a look at that verse again. 2 Kings 2.11 and it came to pass, as they still went on, and talked, and behold, there appeared a chariot of fire, and horses of fire, and parted them both asunder, and Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. The first thing we have to do is address the statement 
Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. If we understand this as Elijah went into heaven, then we have a direct contradiction with the words of Jesus, as we know Jesus said that he was the only man to ascend into heaven. So, how do we reconcile this? Again, when we understand that scripture does not contradict scripture, but rather scripture interprets scripture, the true understanding is much easier to obtain. The heaven that Enoch went up to is not the heaven that Jesus did. There is, in fact, more than one heaven mentioned in the scriptures. There is the heaven where God is said to reside, the heaven to which Jesus ascended. But there is also the earth's atmosphere, and what we call the sky. This in Hebrew is also called a heaven. Genesis 1.6 And God said, Let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament, and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters that were above the firmament. And it was so. And God called the firmament heaven, and the evening and the morning were the second day. Genesis 1.20 And God said, Let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that hath life, and fowl that may fly above the earth in the open firmament of heaven. Of course, birds do not fly in the heaven that God resides in. All of these heavens use the same Hebrew word, Shamayim. Elijah was taken up by a whirlwind into the sky, heaven. This is where whirlwinds are. Now we need to add some context to the story and find out the reason that God took Elijah up in a whirlwind. Elijah and Elisha were traveling around Israel the day that Elijah was to be taken up to heaven. 2 Kings 2.1 And it came to pass, when the Lord would take up Elijah into heaven by a whirlwind, that Elijah went with Elisha from Gilgal. They went to Bethel, 2 Kings 2.2, 2, Jericho, 2 Kings 2.4, and Jordan, 2 Kings 2.6. In Bethel and Jericho, the sons of the prophets asked Elisha, does he know that his master, Elijah, was to be taken away from him that day? 2 Kings 2.3 And the sons of the prophets that were in Bethel came forth to Elisha, and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Lord will take away thy master from thy head to the day? And he said, Yeah, I know it. Hold ye your peace. 2 Kings 2.5 And the sons of the prophets that were in Jericho came to Elisha, and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Lord will take away thy master from thy head today? And he answered, Yeah, I know it. Hold ye your peace. And we can see Elisha knew. We then see that the sons of the prophets wanted to look for Elijah. The men did not think that Elijah had been taken literally to heaven, but they understood that he had simply been taken by the whirlwind that they believed with the Spirit of God, and that he was carried off to a mountain or valley somewhere. Second Kings 2.15 and when the sons of the prophets, which were to view at Jericho, saw him, they said, The spirit of Elijah doth rest on Elisha. And they came to meet him and bowed themselves to the ground before him. And they said unto him, Behold now, there be with thy servants fifty strong men. Let them go, we pray thee, and seek thy master. Lest peradventure the spirit of the Lord hath taken him up, and cast him upon some mountain or into some valley. And he said, Ye shall not send. The reason that God took Elijah was because that it was a time for Elisha to take over. Elisha couldn't simply take over from Elijah while Elijah was still around, as this would have been like God disqualifying him. So Elijah was taken away by the whirlwind, removed from their sight so that Elisha could take his place. Elisha was to take up the mantle of Elijah and take his place as a prophet of God. We see that Elisha did, in fact, take up the mantle dropped by Elijah as he was carried away, 2 Kings 2.12. And Elisha saw it, and he cried, My father, my father, the chariot of Israel, and the horsemen thereof. And he saw him no more. And he took hold of his own clothes and rent them in two pieces. He took up also the mantle of Elijah that fell before him, and went back, and stood by the bank of Jordan. And he took the mantle of Elijah that fell from him, and smote the waters, and said, Where is the Lord God of Elijah? And when he also had smitten the waters, they parted hither and thither, and Elisha went over. But Elijah was not dead at this time, and neither was he literally in heaven. We know this because Elijah himself sent a letter to Jehoram, the king of Judah, in Second Chronicles 12. 
And there came a writing to him from Elijah the prophet, saying, Thus saith the Lord God of David thy father, Because thou hast not walked in the ways of Jehoshaphat thy father, nor in the ways of Asa king of Judah. Jehoram was king of Judah after Elijah had been taken by the whirlwind. Jehoram became king of Judah in 848 BC, after the death of his father Jehoshaphat. 2 Chronicles 21.1 Now Jehoshaphat slept with his fathers, and was buried with his fathers in the city of David. And Jehoram, his son, reigned in his stead. However, he had been joint king with his father for six years before this, from 854 BC. Then Joram, the son of Ahab, became king of Israel in 852 BC, after the death of Ahaziah, because Ahaziah had no son. 2 Kings 1.17 So he died according to the word of the Lord, which Elijah had spoken. And Jehoram reigned in his stead in the second year of Jehoram, the son of Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, because he had no son. So Jehoram, the son of Ahab, reigned as king in Israel in the second year, his joint rulership, of Jehoram, the son of Jehoshaphat, who reigned in Judah. Elijah was taken up by the whirlwind before Jehoram, the son of Ahab, became king in Israel. But we also know that Elijah was around at the time of Ahaziah, as Elijah denounced Ahaziah in 2 Kings chapter 1, verses 1-16. through 16. So Elijah was taken up by the whirlwind sometime between the two kings, which could have only been in 852 BC. But as we saw, Elijah sent a letter to Jehoram, the son of Jehoshaphat, in 848 BC. Before Elijah sent the letter, we are told of an event, the Edomites' revolt. This happened in the days of Jehoram, the king of Judah, the son of Jehoshaphat. This is at least four years, probably more, after Elijah had been taken up. Elijah was still alive on the earth at least four years after the event of the whirlwind. We are not told of the events of the actual death of Elijah. However, when we take all the scripture together, it is very clear that he did die, and he was not taken to heaven, the abode of God. When we do not simply take a verse and isolate it from the rest of scripture, scripture interprets scripture and demonstrates that both Enoch and Elijah contrary to popular misunderstanding, did in fact die. Neither of them were taken alive into heaven. Jesus is correct. No man has ascended into heaven except him. Thank you very much for listening to the Following Truth podcast. I hope the information has been useful and I look forward to seeing you on the next one.